Few weeks back, Google announced that the next version of Android is going to be called the Android Oreo. And most of the devices, including the flagships, have not received the update yet. However, I was able to find an unofficial version of Lineage OS 15, which is based on Android version 8.0 or Android Oreo. It is still in the very early stages of beta testing, and so this is highly unstable, but yet, I just wanted to try out the Oreo features before it becomes official. And so in this video, let's boot our U Eureka with Lineage OS 15 and see what are the new features it brings with it. Welcome everyone, this is Harina from Gadgets Connector and let's get started. So first, you have to download three files and you have to copy them to your SD card. I'll leave the download links for all these files in the description down below, so do check them out. And do note the version of the zip file because the previous versions had some error with that. So check if it has the latest date before downloading. And along with that you have to download the OpenGApps file and don't forget to select the ARM64 version. In few other videos I saw people recommending to flash the non volt modem file but it worked for me even without flashing it. And once you have copied all the files, put into the TWRP recovery. And then select wipe to clear the system, data, cache and Dalvik. And then once done, click on install and then select the lineage OS zip file along with the gapp zip file and then flash it. When the process is completed, click on reboot and then give system. The first boot took about 10 to 15 minutes so you gotta wait for a while. And after that do the setup process and the boot will be done. So we are into the lineage OS 15. And as you can see from the pull down notification tray, yes, it's Android Oreo. The settings have become much more simpler and there are literally very few options. I've installed a pixel launcher on top of that and the three touch kind of functions work fine. Sadly, there are no on-screen navigation keys and only the hardware keys work here. And the back home works fine, but the multitasking, I have seriously no clue where it is and how to open that. I mean, how? And to make things even worse, the hardware keys do not light up and it's very difficult to find if it's given an input or not because the haptic feedback is also very very minimal. Luckily the infamous data toggle bug doesn't make a return here but it comes in another form and that's with Wi-Fi. That was the first bug I was able to notice and even during the setup process it was not able to find the Wi-Fi networks. So I think this is one of the biggest bugs which needs to be fixed. And now let's get into the settings and find what are the new options it has. Going into network settings, first we have the Wi-Fi which doesn't toggle even here. And due to that, even hotspot cannot be turned on. So this is a serious bug. And then under apps and notifications, we have the special app access sub tab, which technically should give the option for picture in picture, but I was not able to get that. Even with the YouTube app, I also tried it with the browser, but sadly I was not able to get this feature working. Now let me show you the default launcher it came with, but it was not the default pixel launcher and it was kind of a duplicate to that. But all the options you would find in a pixel launcher are present here. Going into settings, you can also add the notification badge and also you can change the shape of the icons. And do note that you don't get any stock wallpapers with that and literally there's only one wallpaper. You also have the tap to wake functionality and it works fine as expected. And then you get to see some visual changes to the storage settings and in my opinion it looks good. You also get an option to free up the space which would suggest you to delete the larger files. And then under the security settings, you get the option for security updates which checks if there is any latest updates available. And then under the find my device, you can search for any lost device and then you have the play protect which Google recently announced. Under accessibility settings, you get a new magnify feature which allows you to magnify any part of the screen by triple tapping and then by using the two finger gestures you can move across the screen or else you can even zoom in and zoom out and triple tapping again gets back to the norm 
under developer settings you have an option to allow the root access so it comes pre-rooted and sadly you can't make phone calls with your geosim and volte doesn't simply work as you can see the call doesn't even connect and as i mentioned before there's no option to add on-screen navigation keys and i had to use a third party app for this just because there's literally no option to add or change the navigation buttons so i think this needs to be seriously fixed because without which you can't even do multitasking and moreover you can do the split screen multitasking only then the split screen multitasking works fine and i tested it with youtube app and then twitter and both of them ran simultaneously at the same time with no issues and it also works fine even in the landscape orientation now let me show you the camera app and the camera app's interface is very very simple and minimal there are not much options but it just works fine and then regarding video playback there weren't any issues with that and even the stock video player works fine And hey, in case you are interested to see the easter egg of Oreo, here it is. We get an octopus which is totally unrelated to Oreo, but it looks cool and it's interesting to play with. And then with every new version of Android, we get to see new emojis or the redesigned emojis. This time it's based on Unicode 10 and I have to say the redesign is really good and long pressing on them allows you to change the skin tone or even the gender. And now it looks a lot more closer to the ones which you would find in iOS. And then the LED notification light also works fine and it lights up when charging. And at last Let's get to the most crucial part, the battery life. With my limited time of usage, it roughly gave about 2 hours of screen on time which is not that bad. So the battery life is decent. But do know that the charging times were a bit slow and the device also tend to heat up while charging. And so, do I recommend this to anybody? The answer is yes and no. It's a no to those who use this as a primary phone or if this is your only phone. because. With my limited usage, the performance was good and there weren't any issues with that. But then again, it's not stable and there are a lot of important features missing like Wi-Fi and navigation bar. And also not all the features which are supposed to work with Oreo doesn't work here like the notification shortcut for media player changes dynamically according to the album art but it just remains with the same color for almost all the album arts. I was not able to test it with Spotify or maybe Google Play Music but with the Savan Music Player it doesn't work. So I think it's not fully optimized yet. But yes to those if this is just your secondary phone and you are as much hyped as I was to test out the new features of Oreo then I would definitely recommend you to try this ROM to experience the sweetness of Oreo. And this is just an unofficial version so as soon as the official version comes I would make another video and if you are interested to watch that please stay subscribed. So that's pretty much it for this quick video and I'll talk to you guys with the official one. Until then this is Hariharan signing off. Peace out.